Yeah, we've actually grown at over 20% for each of the last two years. Um, so going back to 2017, you know, we were at 870 million. Now, last year in 2019, we reported 1.33 billion in revenues. And the great news there, it's really all of our product lines that are growing. So we have our InfiniBand solutions, which address HPC, high performance computing, and artificial intelligence. Those are growing uh, really, really well. And also our Ethernet product line, uh, we are the leader in Ethernet adapters at the 25 gig and greater space. We have about 65% market share in that segment. Um, but now our Ethernet switch business is growing very rapidly. We said that grew at 25% uh, for each of the last two quarters, so quarter over quarter. If you annualize that, that means the business is growing at more than 2.5x into cloud and data centers uh, throughout the world, and our cable business is growing. So the good news is that that big growth that we've experienced is very broad-based across all of our products. We actually introduced our new ConnectX 6 DX. It's now a GA product uh, that adds security to our industry-leading um, family of adapters. You know, we're the market leader. Now we've added security. We also talked about our Bluefield 2, which is the next generation of our system on a chip and ITU product. Uh, really important to actually add flexibility and programmability and we can put a computer in front of the computer, and it really improves the security and isolation. In addition, we'll be making an announcement of our Spectrum 3, and that is our new 12.8 terabit per second switch. Uh, it's the first Ethernet switch that's really been optimized for cloud and artificial intelligence use cases, and we don't drop packets. It's really a powerful switch that uh, we can use. And then looking forward, we have end-to-end -end 200 gigabit per second offering. So we have adapters, we have switches, and we have cables, both copper and optical cables. That's actually a critical piece. You need everything to be able to deploy this technology. Some of those optics have actually been what's gating us from getting to 200 and even now 400 gigabit. Our partner, uh, NVIDIA, you know, we've said that it's, it's public, NVIDIA is acquiring Mellanox. But until that's approved, we're operating as two separate companies. But NVIDIA is a great partner, and we're going to be making some announcements there that are related to AI and telco. We have some great new stuff coming, and uh, we're really excited about that. So lots of things happening across the adapters, the switches, and the cables. Exactly. Our new SmartNix and I.O. processing units are really designed to address the transformations that are occurring in cloud and data center, and in particular focused on security. So if you look at our new products like the ConnectX6 DX and the Bluefield product family, you know, what those do is they add security on top of everything else that we do. So what I mean by that is we actually, at line rate, can run IPsec and TLS. TLS is the standard that people will see when they log in and they see an HTTPS. That S stands for security. When they're surfing the web, it means they have a secure connection and all the data that's in motion is being protected. And that normally would have to happen in software. And there's a couple of bad things that happen that I'll talk about. but. When you do that in hardware, we can operate at line rate, meaning we can operate at 100 gigabits per second and even 200 gigabits per second and secure all of the data as it's moving. Not only that, we can actually secure the data at rest. So the data that's on the hard drive, even if somebody compromises the data center and they go try to steal data, all they get is encrypted data because we've encrypted the data at rest. And with the blue field, we actually even take that farther. We can build a completely isolated uh, security domain by putting a computer in front of the computer. And all of the service provider policies for security can remain protected and intact running on that blue field IPU, the IO processing unit, uh, distinct from the x86 application processor. So it's really a fundamental change that we're bringing to the data center to protect customers' data.
Yes, we're introducing our new Spectrum 3 Ethernet switch. It's a 12.8 terabit per second switch that's been optimized for cloud and artificial intelligence, AI, and deep learning applications. The use cases here are incredibly broad. So our customers are among the largest data centers in the world, um, but we also sell to banks, we sell to oil and gas explorations. We built a giant data center with uh, a company from Australia that's doing geo exploration. So really it's across the board. The, the issue here is that there is more and more data being generated and being processed. And if you have uh, small pipes that are trying to feed the giant computers, then you're simply not taking advantage of all of the compute capacity that's coming online. So with us, we say, you know, big compute needs big pipes and big data needs big pipes. Uh, and what we're adding is better virtualization, better capabilities to have telemetry so that we can look and understand the data as things are moving. And we operate at real time without dropping packets. So our competitors' products will actually get overwhelmed by all the data. They start to drop packets and the application performance goes down. And if you're a consumer and you're shopping online or something and the website takes too long to give you the information you need, people are impatient. They jump somewhere else. Uh, so with our solutions, we actually don't drop packets and people get the responses quickly that they want. Uh, and as mobile and edge takes off, this is going to be more and more important. So we really see the new Spectrum 3 addressing all of these markets. We're excited. It's the first 12.8 uh, terabit per second switch that's really designed for cloud and artificial intelligence. Yes, we uh, were actually the first company out there to support the new Sonic operating system that originally Microsoft developed and put into the Open Compute Project as an open source project. Um, so Mellanox has been heavily investing in Sonic for a long time now. So I think Microsoft is the leading contributor to that project, but I think Mellanox is number two in terms of the open source contribution. Sonic is important because it really disaggregates switches. It means that you can choose the best hardware and the best software. That's normal in a server environment. You don't have to, it's not like the old days where you got an IBM mainframe that came with whatever operating system or a VAC that had VMS on it. Uh, today, you buy a server and then you decide what the software is that you want to put on that. That is really what disaggregation and what we call open Ethernet does for networking. So we have, we believe, the best hardware platform available in the entire world. But you can go and choose the operating system, and that can be Sonic, that can be Onyx that we provide, it can be Cumulus, it can be Dent now, which is a new uh, operating system that really Amazon launched. And the important thing with Sonic is, you know, it's being used at scale. Microsoft has talked about the fact they're supporting that in their Azure data center, which is one of the largest data centers in the entire world. But we also now have some customers that are happening in Europe. Um, and so we're excited about that. We actually want to make an announcement. They want to go make sure that they've deployed it. We'll come back and talk to you again because uh, we have a great opportunity in Europe where they're just starting now to deploy Sonic in their, in their data centers. So we're excited about that. Yeah, so when we look at data center connectivity, the three main vectors that we actually see are intelligence, acceleration, and security. So when I say intelligence, what we're seeing is all of this virtualization and containerization. And if you don't have an intelligent network that understands what's happening, then you end up falling back on the CPU and running everything in software. And as we're talking about the data, the amount of data and the amount of data movement is massive, uh, 100 gigabits per second, 200 gigabits per second. So you can't rely on the, just the CPU to have that intelligence. So we're putting more and more intelligence in the network adapters and in the switches. The other piece is, the second thing I mentioned is acceleration. 
So there's this whole push for software-defined networking, software-defined security, software-defined storage. That's great, but again, if you rely only on the CPU to actually touch every packet and make every decision, then it turns out you don't get anywhere near the performance as you historically got with ASICs in purpose-built appliances like load balancers and firewalls. So what we believe the right solution there is to accelerate all of those capabilities that I talked about. And we call that software-defined hardware accelerated. So you get the best of both worlds. The ASIC accelerates moving the individual packets, what's called the data path. But the intelligence and all the flexibility and the scalability is still there with the software-defined control path. So we think that that notion of acceleration is really important. We have technologies like Rocky that accelerate storage and uh, security accelerations, AI accelerators, a lot of great things happening. And then the third piece is the security, and we've talked about that. All those great accelerators that I just talked about, you know, even for things like TCP checksums, all of that breaks if you have an encrypted pipe. If you're running IPsec, then those ones and zeros no longer have the meaning that we need to apply the intelligent accelerators that I was talking about. So what we've added with our ConnectX uh, DX, ConnectX 6 DX, and some of our newer products that are coming is inline crypto accelerators. And that means that as the packets come in from the network, we actually decrypt them in real time, and then we can see all the headers that we need to do TCP offloads and all of this traffic steering and storage acceleration and AI acceleration. So really those are the three things that we see as intelligence, acceleration, and security to build into the network. We think this is the network of the future.